busy player, or busy, busy official, I should say. Into the center circle for the Bulldogs steps Darnell Brody, and in for Lipscomb is John, or I should say Grant Osmond, and the opening pass controlled by the Bulldogs. And back at point guard as he was mostly last season for the Bulldogs is Connor Enright. And Connor Enright, a lot of responsibility with the ball in his hands this year. Has to be real steady in that point guard slot as Tucker DeVries, a good look early, just unable to finish. And bringing the ball up for the Lipscomb Bisons, who, as we mentioned, lost at Wichita State on Monday night, 76 to 59. McGinnis shoots from the wing and scores, and it's Lipscomb on the board first as A.J. McGinnis, who is the leading scorer, as you mentioned, against the Shockers the other night, ignites Lipscomb to get things started. And you see the quick trigger, right, Larry? I love the catch and shoot. Coaches talk about that all the time. Players these days is Connor Enright going hard to his right hand. A little bit of a breakdown there for the Bisons, but the catch and shoots, catch and shoots on the perimeter is what you're going to see out of Lipscomb. Joe Anderson, a pass first point guard, brings it up, and this is Derek Boyd. Ball tipped away by DeVries, but retrieved outside by Darian Boyd. Boyd now drives the lane nice. and scores. And left hand, you see the strong body in Darian Boyd, the ability to get downhill. He could shoot it from distance, but at his best when he's using that strength to get into the rim. Played a couple of years in... Division II basketball at Georgetown College. There's the three ball knocked down by the Bulldogs' Kevin Overton, and he's going to become, I think, quickly a crowd favorite. Yeah, and at about six foot five, six foot six, the ability to shoot over defenders and good athleticism on the perimeter. Plenty to learn from the freshman, but off to a good start. Backing down Owen McCormick, but can't hit the shot, and the rebound. Taken by DeBreeze. Here's Etten Wright looking for a shot. A three ball to Wilco. And the first foul of the ball game is going to be called against Lipscomb. But and what, it is whistled against Owen McCormick. But what you just saw is what Coach Darren DeBreeze wants, especially with the young group, as they're starting to get a little bit more chemistry. Getting up tempo and getting speed in transition as we see Overton, Tucker DeBreeze becoming more of a facilitator. He's going to draw so much gravity when he has the ball in his hands. Has to continue to improve his passing. That time, a good look to Overton. Overton ranked number 37 by a recruiting service in combo guards. He's from Oklahoma City. DeBreeze pitches to Enright. DeBreeze now against a much shorter player in Pruitt. Fall away shot is there. That time, Pruitt, who is 6'3", trying to defend against the Bulldogs, 6'7", Darren DeBreeze, couldn't get the job done. And Pruitt, a good defender and strong body in his own right. Just the size of Tucker DeBreeze a little too much is Darian Boyd. And again, it's the quick trigger threes on the outside. See, you're gonna, we're going to see a lot of early shots from Lipscomb, especially bombing away from distance. And right, a couple of fakes, tries to feed to Darnell Brody with the ball kicked away. Here's Boyd trying to finish, and at the other end, it's Overton with a block, but the cleanup is there by Grant Asman. Yeah, great hustle from Lipscomb up the floor, creating that open opportunity, getting the easy two in transition. Wright stops, pops and scores. Aston Wright, the transfer from Cal Northridge, where he averaged almost 17 points a game last year, fourth best in the conference. Pruitt on the miss. And the Bulldogs quickly up the court with Wright leading the break. And then a violation spotted against Wright. Yeah, it looks like they called a carry that time on Atten Wright. A little bit of indecisiveness as Overton was running the wing on the outside. But watch this. This is a guy who's really comfortable with the basketball in his hands. Atten Wright, we mentioned 17 a game last year. He has to be aggressive on the offensive side to create that one-two punch with Tucker DeVries on the offensive end. Two-time honorable mention, all Big West. And by the way, his dad, Eddie, has driven out from California wow. to watch him play in this great debut. It's a heck of a drive. Yes, it is. And it looks like checking with the scores table so, here. We understand perhaps an issue with a uniform number change as the Bulldogs, meanwhile, have made a change. And they have sent Carlos Rosario into the lineup, a 6-7 sophomore transfer from Washington State. And they're going to assess a technical foul to Lipscomb for using an incorrect number. I'm trying to figure out what number that might be. 
as Boyd. That was the number he is expected to wear. And here comes Doug Simmons to explain it to us. And so again, a technical foul called for the scorebook violation. What exactly was the problem? Yeah, just a Class B technical did not have one guy in the scorebook, did not have Pruitt number two in the scorebook. So a bit of a technicality, uh, but a catch either by the scorer's table or by the officials. One free throw for Drake, back to the point of entry, Lipscomb ball on the side. And of course, it didn't become a violation until Pruitt entered, entered the game. The game yes. now, here's the interesting thing, Adam. If you looked at their roster and their media notes, they somehow admitted number two Pruitt. So whoever was using the scorebook must have been going off that roster because Pruitt was not listed there. Nice spin move and a score by Darian Boyd. And he's got an early five for Lipscomb. Uh, how about that pretty for Boyd getting downhill? We've seen that a couple of times, finishing with the left hand around the cup. Eric Northweather fires and misfires. He's hoping to really improve a three-point shooting game that was lagging last year, but was certainly outstanding at Truman State. And, you know, Larry, I love what I just saw. And now the upperclassman, Tucker DeVries, as we see the nice finish there for Boyd. But Tucker DeVries goes right over to Northweather, talks to him for a minute, lets him know to keep shooting, shoot the next one. A little bit of leadership there for number 12. Boyd almost had the ball stripped, and it's recovered and gets the pass off to Osmond. Osmond. Dishes for Will Pruitt. Pruitt, really the rock of this team, according to head coach Lenny Acock. And the Bulldogs able to draw a charge. Yeah, a little bit of anticipation. Connor Enright became a fan favorite as a redshirt freshman a year ago for his grittiness on the defensive end. That time, anticipation as Asman is going through the lane and. I thought Connor Enright actually leaning backwards. Sometimes the officials are going to call a block if you're leaning too much before the contact, but fortuitous whistle for the Bulldogs. Both teams starting hot, hitting four of their first six shots. Bulldogs, though, have not had a lead, but have a chance to get that done here as DeVries Top. fires and scores off the baseline. Man, that's just when you're six foot seven, the ability to go off the bounce, knock down shots from distance, just creating so much space. McGinnis takes it right to the rack and draws a foul on the way in. And Larry, that's part of what I like about this Lipscomb Ball Club. Catch quick decisions, catch and shoot, catch, get to the rim. McGinnis starting right, spinning back to his left, the step back three. This Lipscomb offense can be potent from distance, especially when they compress the defense and get downhill. Boyd doing that early on. Boyd missing a couple of weeks with the knee injury, so he's just come back about a week or so ago, but looking good. McGinnis completes the three-point play. He's got an early six, and Lipscomb's got a three-point lead. Change of the Bulldog lineup, Colby Garland, a freshman from Magnolia, Arkansas, comes in. Here's Rosario, the transfer from Washington State, leaving it on the rim, and Will Pruitt's there for the rebound. He is on a minute limit because of his broken nose and a bad cap, and yet he played 24 minutes at Wichita State the other night. Yeah, you, sometimes you hear minute limit, you think like 12 or 15 minutes, but... You know, for Pruitt, even limiting him just to 25 as we see the nice cut, the finish in the lane, but Pruitt limited him to 25 minutes. He's been a mainstay in the Lipscomb lineup over the course of his career. Garland played a year in prep school at Lincoln Prep. Here is DeVries knocking down the three, and Tucker DeVries picking up where he left off, isn't yeah, he? I mean, you just see why he was the player of the year a year ago in the Missouri Valley, preseason player of the year this year. He made 88 threes a year ago as McGinnis answers with his second three. And Lipscomb and the Bulldogs trading baskets early in this one. Yeah, this Lipscomb offense doing a great job finding open looks on the perimeter, confusing this young Drake defense. Rosario is open, makes a nice fake to get free. The Bulldogs moving the ball crisply from side to side, but a takeaway by A.J. McGinnis. Boyd pulls up and has it blocked by... Tucker DeBreeze, but he follows his own shot and scores. And Coach Darren DeBreeze unhappy with the defensive effort for the substitutes here in about the last 90 second door cuts, but a lot of it is looking for those threes on the perimeter. This Lipscomb Ball Club will play five guys on the floor who will all be quick trigger three point shooters. Having the capability out there keeps them for offensive punch in every basketball game. Garland remains in to play the point. Brody comes high to take the feed. Hand off to DeVries. 
Looks for yes, Brody, and Brody scores two. Nice pass from Tucker DeBreeze. Darnell Brody with his first two. Oh, and that's just, that's really tough to defend. A good after timeout set for Coach Darren DeBreeze. No doubt he was talking mostly about the defensive end, but drew something special up in the huddle. Boyd works his way to the baseline, pitches out for an open T.J. Johnson who buries it. And T.J. Johnson, good size, six foot six, strong, and can really shoot it from distance. A good looking freshman for the Bisons. Pipskin opens an early eight point lead on the road. In the corner, it's Kyron Gibson leaving it back for Overton. Overton finds Brody underneath, and Brody is fouled. And the ability to dribble penetrate is so important for this, this Drake offense. If you're not Tucker DeVries, for all the other guys on the floor, the ability to get in the lane and draw the defense, whether it's score for you or create a play for a teammate, nice play from the freshman Overton, drawing the foul, but a good find to Brody. Darren DeVries, when we ask him what is your most important thing tonight to accomplish, he said defensive consistency. It has not been there early. Yeah. Well, that's what you get with the young, inexperienced team. As Tucker DeVries unable to knock that one. A good rebound that time for the freshman point guard, Garland. Brody in deep to score. Second basket in a row. Here's Head, who had not played a whole lot against Wichita State the other night. Just two points, a couple of boards in early tonight. Boyd draws the paint and gets blocked by Overton. And then in a scramble for the loose ball, a foul whistle. And you see Overton a little bit slow on the on the initial defense, but a great recovery coming with the backside. Watch this with two hands, using the athleticism. Usually you say a shot blocker, you want to be the second guy off the floor. That time Overton, watch where he takes off. He takes off right there. Boyd is just getting into his second step. Overton long enough, athletic enough to still get the deflection. Boyd gets the inbound speed, and there to take the charge is Connor Enright. And so, Larry, really good play by Enright. Enright was guarding the inbounder, right? And when you're guarding the inbounder, you got to see everything. As Boyd's coming off that, Enright steps in, draws the contact, not allowing Boyd to get easily to the rim. Really nice play for the redshirt for sophomore, number four, Connor Enright. Garland on the dribble out of Magnolia, Arkansas. His high school team won back-to-back -back state championships. And these are big minutes right here for Drake. Tucker DeVries going to the bench the first time. Watch this Drake offense. See how they get open looks. And initially getting it to the big fella Brody to help collapse the defense creates an open look. Aggressiveness on the offensive side. And Colby Garland with his first college points. And the Bulldogs have a run underway, cutting an eight-point deficit to four. And off the ball. Official stop play and a violation is spotted. And they got Connor Enright on his part of what they want to see is Darnell Brody more consistently try to catch the ball near the rim, but also make sure he is more active going to both the offensive and defensive glass. He has all those things. What he doesn't have is the 30 pounds that he came here with. He's down to 265 from when he reported to Drake and played really that first year at 295. Made a huge difference. Here's Will Pruitt playing with a broken nose, being guarded by Colby Garland. On top, it comes to McCormick. Four seconds on the shot clock, so Pruitt puts it up. And it's just a little bit short and quickly rebounded by Kyron Gibson. Gibson gets it underneath to Overton, and Kevin Overton scores his first Bulldog points. And no Tucker DeVries in the game. What do you want to do? Get out in transition, right? Use your athleticism, use your speed. Brody there for what he thought was a clean block, but the officials did not. Uh, Darnell Brody, just a little bit of body. Well, that's a lot of body that got a little bit of body. It looked like clean up top, but watch this. Getting out in transition. Gibson getting it up to Overton, running the lanes. And for all these new guys, as you're trying to fit into a new system, getting out in transition is a great way just to not think. Get out and react to the play. Overton getting an easy two near the rim. Will Pruitt scores. Now watch Pruitt. I, I love the tight curl and looked like pretty good defense that time from Brody. But, you know, when you're an experienced player, what do you do? Pruitt, he gets the contact first, right? Get the contact first before you go up, especially when a bigger shot blocker is around. 
Brody goes high to pull down the rebound. And a little bit of 2 2 1 pressure, even off the miss from Lipscomb. Dropping back 2 3 zone here. First zone we've seen out of either team. Yeah, most, mostly play man to man, about 90%. Brody turns, spins, and that time it's Lipscomb who wanted to call and didn't get it. And Darnell Brody has three buckets in a row for Drake. See on the other side going 2 3 zone. What do you want to do? Get the ball in the center. Darnell Brody, a good job. You know, when you have a big body, Larry, you start going into people. They anticipate that contact. Watch the dexterity from the big fella. Just twinkle toes on the spin move and the nice finger roll finish. 6'10, 265. And that loss of weight we talked about really speaks to his rededication yeah. to his game after he came here from Seton Hall. McCormick makes a nice move on Brody, but the Bulldogs do a good job reacting to it defensively. On the drive, it's Pruitt, leaves it off for McCormick, who scores. A great, re great re-space from McCormick that time as Pruitt drives baseline, finding a little angle there in the middle. Lipscomb continues their red-hot shooting at 69%, 11 of 16. The miss by Gibson, the rebound taken by McGinnis. The trailer Pruitt from deep. McCormick battles for the offensive rebound. The Bulldogs block out well. Coming out with it is Garland. Garland and Gibson right now on the guard spot for the Bulldogs. A couple of newcomers. Along with Brody, Wright a newcomer. So the Bulldogs showing a lot of their new faces early in this one. Brody bullets a pass for Garland. The left-hander fires with six on the shot clock. And the rebound is run down once again by McGinnis. McGinnis, who began to start late last year for the Bisons and really became a factor down the stretch. And he has started well in this ballgame with an early nine points, including a couple of threes. Anderson drives, feeds it for Pruitt. Now you mentioned Anderson, a pass first guy, does a great job keeping his head up, creating space in this Lipscomb ball club. Everybody catches on the perimeter, real quick decisions and switching back, I think, man to man as they were holding up their hands. Drake running their zone offense, took about 15 seconds in the shot clock to adjust. Overton puts the ball on the floor, just muscles his way in that time. Yeah, second time we've seen the lefty Use that right shoulder to protect and the athleticism to go up and finish. Really good ball game if you like back and forth basketball. Plenty of that. Boyd fires and scores. Tough. So much confidence oozing out of number four, Darian Boyd. Boyd, you got a dozen in Wichita State already with 10 tonight. Bulldogs shooting 60% and yet Lipscomb shooting better, 67%. Here's Boyd in deep, couple of rather uh, Brody in deep, couple of moves and misses, and Pruitt's there for the rebound. Yeah, it looked like a lot of contact there. Heard a slap. Couldn't tell if that was Brody on himself. Is McCormick a wide open look? He can knock him down from out there, just unable to finish that one. Overton brings the ball up for the Bulldogs, who've trailed by as many as eight. Is Atten Wright cutting into the middle? Fakes, fires, and mm. scores. The yeah. transfer from Cal Northridge makes his second basket. Uh, the frantic pace back and forth. Lenny Hickup holding his hands up, saying, slow it down. Let's run a little bit of offense for Lipscomb. What they try to do is score in the first 10 seconds, and if not, they want to make you defend, and then they want to score in the last 10 of the shot clock. Here's McGinnis firing and scoring. This team is on fire. Now, how much of it is the Drake defense that Darren DeVries is not happy with and how much of it is really good shooting? Yes. Okay. Yeah, it's a little bit of both. I mean, okay. I mean, you got dangerous weapons for this Lipscomb group, right? You got both McGinnis and Boyd who can both catch and shoot from three. They can get downhill and get to the rim. And we've seen the mid-range game the last couple possessions. That is difficult to defend. Coach Darren DeVries would like to see a little bit more resistance from his Bulldog bunch. He's going to send four new faces into the lineup the next time the ball is dead. And you know they've been told to play some defense. Pruitt on the miss, Brody on the rebound. Wright leads the Bulldogs on the break. He pulls back, he fires a three and scores it. And Aiton Wright with seven points. Man, tough shot in transition and a lot of conf confidence from Atten Wright knocking that one down. So encouraging for the Bulldogs is the fact they've made a run back at Lipscomb with 
Tucker DeVries on the bench. Tough. Brody there to pluck off another rebound for Drake. Darnell Brody with three early rebounds. Here's the pull up by Wright. And the miss and the rebound by Anderson. Anderson, a junior from Maryville, Tennessee, played three years at Furman. This is first year. Once again, they get, try to get the ball in Pruitt's hands as often as possible. McCormick fires a three, and he's 0 for 2 shooting the three ball. And once again, it's Colby Garland getting a lot of early playing time to run down the rebound. The left-hander fires, and it rolls off. Darian Boyd with the rebound for the Bisons. Bulldogs have been tied a couple of times, but have not led in this game. McCormick is there to clean it up, and Owen McCormick with his second basket. And a lot of tired bodies, and Coach Acuff calling timeout, giving a little bit of rest for the weary on both ends. Yeah, they're really giving this Drake defense fits. And you saw their coach, Lenny Acuff, who is a great believer and impressed with the Bulldog offense. He said he just loves the way they play offense, loves to watch Drake play. And back to the 2-3 zone, so a little bit more zone from Coach Acuff than he traditionally sees. And again, it kind of sp sputters this Drake offense just a little bit coming out of that timeout. Rosario's pass just a little bit too low for the big guy Northweather to handle. And here comes Joe Anderson, the point guard, to bring it up for the Bisons. They're picked to finish fifth in the A-Sun Conference this year. Here's the drive and a foul. Yeah, Larry, when Boyd gets the ball on that elbow, where do you think he's going to go? You think he's going to go right or left? <laughs> he goes hard to that left hand. Does, watch yeah. how low he gets. Watch how low he gets under Carlos Rosario. Watch this. His shoulder gets under Carlos Rosario's hip. So what you want to do when you're a ball handler, if you're going to get leverage, get your body down low. If you stay on balance, he could take the contact with his shoulder below his hip. That's a big part of what allows Darian Boyd to get all the way to the rim. And here's an interesting spelling lesson for you. He spells his name D-E-R-R-I-N, but pronounces it Darian. The Bulldogs coach spells his first name D-A-R-I-A-N, but pronounces Darren. Figure that one out for me. That's true. You know, that is one of the most interesting parts about doing this job, getting a chance to watch basketball <laughs> in the front row, see these games. But, man, names can be confusing, can't they? Oh, man, they can be. Here's Connor Enright going coast to coast and scoring. Wow. wow. How about the pace from number four, Connor Enright, and the ability amidst a lot of traffic to go up and finish. Bulldogs have had only one lead in this game, that by two points. And from the corner, the red-hot shooting continues. That's T.J. Johnson knocking down his second three. And just great spacing by Lipscomb and good ball movement. I mentioned quick decisions, right? I mean, look how the ball will not stick on the offensive side for the Bisons. DeBreeze the goes one-on-one -on -one and scores against Grant Osmond. The Lipscomb lead is three as Anderson feeds to Osmond, a junior from Kimberly, Wisconsin. His boy down the lane, taking it to the rack, but having to give up the shot. And the rebound is taken by Enright. Enright, who missed five weeks preseason with a knee injury, able to bring it up. Northweather looks for three, and the rebound is cleared once again by Anderson. Yeah, both these teams willing to run and shoot early in the shot clock. Johnson, that one felt good off his hands right in front of us. Looked good, too. Back rim. Yeah, shot clock. We haven't said that many times in this first half. No, we have not. Aiton Wright is going to be called for a charge. And an easy call and a good job on the backside that time by Anderson, anticipating Wright going to his right hand, taking it right in the chest. And just understanding how to navigate those. Garrett Sturts fits into that mix as well. Understanding how to navigate the ball screens, how to be physical, how to play defense without fouling. Something sorely missed on the Drake sideline right now is 39 points in the, so far at this under four minute timeout. Sturts says you saw still around as a graduate assistant. McGinnis on the fall away tough. scores again. That's tough and, and just a little bit too easy. Not a lot of resistance off the screen and a hand in the face from the taller Northweather, but McGinnis already in the rhythm. Northweather hands on the come around to DeVries give and go back to Northweather and from behind McCormick comes up with a block. Brody back in for the Bulldogs and Northweather will check out. 3.20 to go in the opening half. Lipscomb leading it 41-36 as the Bulldogs will 
play it in with Enright. And he throws it away. Bad decision by him. Anderson picks it up and puts it up and in. And Anderson will check out. 3.20 to go in the opening half. Lipscomb leading it 41-36 as the Bulldogs will play it in with Enright. And he throws it away. Bad decision by him. Anderson picks it up and puts it up and in. And Anderson almost lost that ball on the way up as he was getting up and down the lane. Those unforced turnovers, though, really easy points for Lipscomb the other way. Hard for Drake when they're already at a deficit. Bulldogs with their sixth turnover, but Lipscomb has turned it over only three times tonight. Great improvement for them after their Wichita State outing, which got off to a tough start for them. And watch Anderson almost loses yeah. that ball a little bit going up. That's one of the ones you never really see, but able to finish it in transition. DeVries kicks it off in the corner. Open there for a three is Connor Enright. And probably one of the areas Connor Enright most improved his ability to catch and shoot from three. Struggled early on in his freshman campaign. Shot it better as the year moved along. He just had 19 threes all of last season. McCormick tries to hit through it, but the Bulldogs defense able to come up with the turnover to just the fourth tonight against the Bisons. DeVries works his way into the lane. Give and go back to DeVries, who scores the three ball. 11 for Tucker DeVries, and the Bulldogs back within a point of the Bisons. Now you could tell Tucker DeVries felt that one early, wanted to get it off, knocked it down. Rosario knocks it away. Good recovery, though, by McGinnis. Got plenty of time on the shot clock with two minutes left to play in the first half. McGinnis fires a three, but and it's a three for McGinnis. That is his third three tonight, and he lit it up against the Shockers. He's lighting it up more tonight. Uh, it looks like Rosario got a key transfer portal in the various changes in the rosters. Yeah, and you seem to get more coaching changes. You mentioned the transfer portal. So many just different faces, especially in these mid-major leagues where you're used to seeing a little bit more continuity. DeVries against the smaller Boyd, leaves it for Brody. Brody tries to slip a pass inside to Gibson, and it's a takeaway by McGinnis. Lipskin has led for all but two points so far in this ballgame. Boyd travels. And a good defense that time for Garland, forcing Boyd to start his move to his right hand, anticipating him coming back. Forced Boyd to get to kind of his second move and shuffle his feet. You saw the Lipscomb coach, Lenny Acuff, busy guy. All Division I coaches are busy, but he's also president of the National Association of Basketball Coaches Board of Directors. And I said, well, they must leave you alone during the season. He said, no, that's not the case. He said, we have a phone call a week, and there are a lot of issues that the coaches are working on. One of them is that there are a lot of decision makers in college basketball that include boards with no coaches, like sure. the recent decision about who got to the NIT. Oh, interesting. And, you know, and he said, no coaches on these boards to make these decisions. They got caught by surprise. So that's one of the many yeah. things that the NABC works on. Yeah, that was a disappointing one to see the NIT kind of change right as the season was starting as well as we see McGinnis continuing to dominate in the mid-range. Nice little one-two dribble pull-up going to his left. Set his career high at Wichita State the other night with 17. Tonight he's got 18. DeVries looks for three. Brody scraps for the offensive rebound and scores. A big time bucket for Darnell Brody. A sputter and Drake offense the last few possessions getting hustle plays. Offensive rebounds can really be a momentum boost for your club. Eight points, four rebounds for Brody, and that's the Bulldogs' charge to him this year. Improve your rebound to get up around eight and a half a ball game. Last year he was under six. Nine on the shot clock, 15 on the game clock. Henderson trying to work the ball inside, and there's a push away from the play, and a foul is called a push off, spotted against Lipscomb. And still 10 seconds, plenty of time on this on the, on the clock here. Use it or lose it, timeout already used as we see Anderson just moving as he's given that dribble handoff. It's been a point of emphasis for officials in the past, but these are the type of plays coaches work on early in the uh, excuse me early in the practice season. 10 seconds left, how to finish? No timeout. 
Look at DeVries bringing the ball up at 6-7. This doesn't happen to a lot of players. You have to be really good to do that, and he does. And he draws a foul in the process against A.J. McGinnis. And had one foul to give to Lipscomb, so that was purposeful. Getting down to four seconds, side out of bounds for Drake. Again. Bulldogs have been to the free throw line just once tonight, and that was on a technical foul situation. An administrative technical foul at that. Here's Garland inbounding. The ball poked away and out of bounds by Pruitt, and now the Bulldogs have 1.3 seconds to score. Great trying to win their 38th consecutive home non-conference game, but it's been a challenge, certainly in the first 20 minutes. Aiden Wright comes onto the floor for the Bulldogs, and he will replace Tyron Gibson. Wright brings great quickness and can get the ball off in a hurry. And Asman in the corner, six foot eleven, using his length to make it difficult for Garland. DeVries at the buzzer, not good. And it will be the Bisons trying to pull an upset on opening night for the Drake Bulldogs, who will take a 48 to 44 lead to the locker room. And commits the same story. Their starters in as well as the second half begins, with one exception for Lipscomb, and that's Will Pruitt, who did not start the ball game. Will start the second half for the Bisons, and he's the guy on the apparently on somewhat of a limit as far as minutes because of his broken nose, but he's played a lot in this first half. Yeah, 16 minutes already for Pruitt, and starting the second half, a good sign that he's probably feeling pretty good. McCormick on the weave, finds it off to Boyd. Boyd trying to break down the defense of Overton. Boyd slips it off in the corner. Pruitt on the drive, seven on the shot clock. Well, the Bulldogs have certainly shored up their defense on this first possession of the second half, but then McCormick drills a three with two on the shot clock. And Darnell Brody getting lost on defense, just kind of navigating into the lane, losing McCormick on the backside. Good penetration and fine by Pruitt. And McCormick knocks down his first. Henright finds the left-hander over to the misfires, and the rebound is claimed by Anderson. Pruitt takes it right to the rack and pulls it back out. McCormick, is he still hot from three? Not this time, in and out. Connor Henright runs down the rebound. Hatton right from the corner. The newcomer from Cal Northridge has his second three and his tenth point of the ball game. Good swing pass there. Tucker DeVries, easy three, at and right. Just underway, second half. Take away by Wright. Wright leaves it off for DeVries. DeVries scores it, gets fouled. Unselfish play that time by Wright to dish it off to DeVries, and it paid off in an and one. Defense, Larry, spurs your offense. At and right, the active hands. A little bit of contact there with Boyd, Coach Acuff. Upset that there was no foul called in the drop pass to Tucker DeVries. I think an easy call for the official Pruitt foot in side that circle. Tucker DeVries taking the contact strong enough to finish off the window. Looking for his 16th point of the night. Bulldogs back to within a point. In the first half, Lipscomb led for 18 minutes and 20 seconds. The Bulldogs led for 11 seconds. Pruitt, you can see why they consider him the rock of this team and why even with a broken nose and a bad calf, he's going to see a lot of minutes. Oh, and you see McGinnis loses his shoe out on the perimeter. McCormick falls down, tries to save it to Pruitt. The pass is wide. Bulldogs on the turnover, get the basketball with the chance to take the lead. And Lenny Acuff again unhappy with the officials. And McCormick mouthing off a little bit, not happy. Looking for a foul call, gets teed up. And Lenny Acuff really unhappy right now and jawing with Doug Simmons, the head referee. There was an administrative technical early in the ballgame against Lipscomb. That's because they had a wrong number in the scoreboard, or in the scorebook, I should say, the official scorebook. Now this one occurs on the court, and Breeze goes to the line. DeVries last year, an 84% free throw shooter. Now we'll take a look at it. McCormick just kind of getting after the official that time. And when you're the officials kind of arguing back and forth with you, even if you're walking away, they're still listening. And McCormick kind of kept his mouth running. Coach Lenny Acuff 
trying to get his, trying to keep his guys together, but you hear the Drake faithful getting behind this Bulldog bunch. Just their second lead of the night at 52 to 51. Brody on the come round to DeBreeze, tried to use the screen. Enright with a penetration. And then the ball deflected off Enright, although the Bulldogs didn't see it that way. I think the call is going to be reversed. John Hendricks along the baseline made the call, but Doug Simmons, who was the out official of the play, called it. And now he's whistled another technical against McCormick. So, Apparently, but uh, no, take it back just against Anderson. It was against Anderson. Now, I think actually when I watched that live, I did think it hit at and right on that back shoulder. We'll have to take a look at that play. Coach Lenny Acuff unhappy with his team is back to back technical fouls. The reason hit a moment ago both technical opportunities misses on the first. And the 34th year head coach for Lipscomb. 34 years in the profession, just five at Lipscomb. Not very happy right now. As the Bulldogs stretch their lead to two, that equals their biggest lead of the night. And now it'll really be a, a test for Lipscomb with the Bulldogs with some momentum and the crowd back into the ball game to see if they can maintain. And they force the Bulldogs to use the timeout. No, oh, to take a five second violation. Yeah, he did not get the timeout. Did not get the timeout and a big mistake. An opportunity for momentum that time. Not only one missed free throw, but an empty possession that time for Drake. And meanwhile, off the ball, a foul is called against Kevin Overton. Overton with his first foul. Amy Bonner hands the ball to Joe Anderson who looks to inbound. Pruitt finds Boyd. It's a well-disciplined offense being run tonight by Lipscomb. And again, they're doing it without their leading scorer, a first-team all-conference performer from a year ago. Pruitt can't finish on the drive that time, the loose basketball. And it was grabbed by Overton, then poked out of bounds by Lipscomb and it's great basketball. Bulldogs on a 9-0 run. A pretty good look that time for Pruitt, just unable to finish against the big fella Brody. But you feel a little bit of chippiness for both these teams, Larry. Eight and right. Baseline feed, but the pass just a little bit tough for Overton to handle. And picking it up is McGinnis. McGinnis goes inside, and he gets fouled by Overton on the way in. Overton committing his second foul here in the half. Well, no backing down from Lipscomb despite the 9-0 Bulldog run. No, and five team fouls already in the first three minutes. We talked about not a lot of for, for, uh, free throws in the first half. As you see, Overton, anytime you put two hands on the ball handler on the perimeter, that's a pretty automatic whistle from the officials. But a lot of whistles early here in this second half. Here's Boyd looking to McCormick. Now Boyd off the screen, goes to the baseline. Darnell Brody's there to provide the defense. Shot clock goes to eight. Drive by Anderson. He'll put it up himself and miss it. And there for the rebound is Kevin Overton, the freshman from Oklahoma City. DeVries, a long three. Anderson quickly the other direction. Anderson, that pass first point guard, but he's an effective point guard. Yeah, does a great job playing with pace. And McGinnis, red hot on a career best night for him, has 20 points here early in the second half. Oh, and all, pretty much all the baskets for McGinnis have been pretty easy. Like dribble in those one, two dribble pull ups, catch and shoot threes, doing a great job being efficient on the offensive end. Darnell Brody doesn't get the roll, and the rebound is taken by McGinnis. So the Bulldogs open just their second lead of the night. Lipscomb comes back to tie it, and now they tie to regain the lead. Nate Ferguson about to check in for the Bulldogs. And the whistle blows. We have a stoppage in play. Timeout is taken with 15.53 left to play. In the second half of the Anderson, Joe Anderson gets called for the technical. So two fouls, two technical fouls, Larry, within a one minute stretch for Lipscomb led to three points for Drake. Could be big down the stretch as we're in a tight ball game. 
that we are. That time, McGinnis mishandling the basketball, but it's picked up by T.J. Johnson. And I thought maybe we'd see Nate Ferguson here in the second half, 24, checked in for Drake for his pace and defensive prowess. For the shot clock and the turnover forced by Atten Wright. And so the Bulldogs take over on just the ninth turnover of the night by Lipscomb, considering the pace of this ballgame. Ten turnovers for Drake and now nine for Lipscomb. Pretty good. So we're seeing Darren DeBreeze being used, I should say, uh, Tucker DeBreeze being used in different positions and bringing the ball up a lot and playing a lot more of a kind of a guard spot. Yeah, in a facilitator role, and part of it is, you know, you have no Roman Penn, no DJ Wilkins, no Garrett Sturts, guys that are pretty comfortable with the basketball in their hands. Tucker DeBreeze bearing the brunt of the playmaking, creating opportunities for himself and his teammates. Can't save that one, but they're using the term now in basketball, unicorn, a guy who has the strength to play a power forward, but the technical skills to play a guard, and, and that's what Lenny Acuff, the Lipscomb coach, referred to Tucker DeVries as a unicorn, which is a high compliment. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and, and normally, you know, when you get the chance to talk to a lot of these head coaches, they are very, very complimentary of the opponents they're about to play. Watching them on film, they see all the best things from the other teams. They see all the worst things from their teams, usually, when they're watching film. That gets you into the mindset of a coach. Yeah, point well taken. Shot clock is at 10. Penetrating the lane is Asman. And a foul is whistled against Drake. Uh, a little bit of a ticky-tack foul there. The contact on the inside between Asman and Ferguson. Got Ferguson on the whistle. Concerted effort, though, I think, by the officials here in the second half as this game's getting more and more physical just to kind of keep that freedom of movement. McCormick back in for Lipscomb. I think Coach Jacob wanted him to just settle down a little bit. He's back in there now. He's got the basketball. Here's Boyd. Trying to break down Ferguson. Shot clock is at eight. Boyd takes it to the rack. Misses the shot. Good defense by Ferguson. And the Bulldogs come up the court. In a game tied at 53. DeVries takes it to the rack and gets the roll. 21 points for Tucker DeVries. That ends a Bulldog scoring drought of two minutes and 45 seconds in which they had three turnovers. McCormick sets the screen, gets it back, puts it to the floor, gets past Ferguson. Here's Johnson for three. And the long rebound taken by McGinnis, who misfires from three. And there for the rebound is Ferguson. And the pace, both these groups getting up and down in a hurry. Tucker DeVries pulling from deep in and out. The crowd would have exploded had that one gone down. Feet inside, right, able to play the defense and knock it away. And when these early season games, you see players, because they're not used to the pace up and down, getting a little bit winded after a few possessions, playing at this level of intensity. And plenty of pace in this one. DeVries spins, fires, and don't like like count it. Stepped out of bounds yes, he did. as he was going to the baseline. Good move from Tucker DeVries, but just a little bit off with his footwork there, stepped on the baseline. By the way, Lipsman's 48 points in the first half. The most Drake had given up since trailing in Iowa 49-40 back in December of 2013 in the old Big Four Classic. Ah, uh, yes, the Big Four Classic is, we saw the replay there, good officiating and good camera work from our crew to be able to catch just the toe dip from Tucker DeVries on the baseline. Pruitt spins and leaves it short, and the rebound is grabbed by Tyron Gibson, the transfer from Texas Arlington. DeVries getting the ball in his hands a lot, takes it to the paint and can't score it, but we'll have a chance at the line. An aggressive attack mode here from Tucker DeVries, pulling up in transition, trying to get the ball off the bounce into the lane and drawing the contact that time from Asman as Tucker DeVries trying to will his team to a little bit of advantage here early in the second half. Asman gets his second foul. DeVries knocks down the free throw. He comes into this ball game number 15 all time career scoring at Drake with wow. 1133 points. How about that after two years? That's pretty amazing, isn't it? Another season like the last couple, he will be in the top 10 before this season comes to a close. And his free throws right now, the difference is the Bulldogs 
up the lead to 57 to 53, their biggest lead of the night. Lipscomb, meanwhile, has turned cold. Just one of their last eight shots have gone down over the last three plus minutes. And now minutes again as we approach this under 12 timeout. No Tucker DeVries on the floor. Drake picking up the pressure a little defensively, forcing the turnover that time from Lipscomb. Garland and Enright on the back line for the Bulldogs. And up front, it's Ferguson along with Wright and Gibson. So a lot of new faces on the Bulldog floor right now. Ferguson and Enright, the two returnees. And on the way in, the foul whistled against Boyd. Boyd with his second foul. And we talked about a lot of team fouls called early in this second half. That's the sixth called against Lipscomb, three against the Bulldogs. Darnell Brody comes back onto the court for Drake. Inbound speed comes to Enright. Enright takes one on one against Anderson and misfires. And the rebound once again is run down by McGinnis. McGinnis doing a great job tonight with 20 points. That his fourth rebound. Asman on the handoff to McGinnis. McGinnis and Asman play catch. Now Anderson tries to go baseline. The shot clock winding down. Bulldogs are forcing longer possessions from Lipscomb in the second half. But a finish there by McGinnis. Right, that was just, that was good offense that time. Good defense for Drake, but McGinnis breaking it down off the dribble. Left hand flip off the glass, tough to guard. Drake on a 13 to four run over the last six minutes after trailing by four at the half. Peyton Wright, the newcomer looking for help. And Wright with 15 on the shot clock. Tries to get it down low for Darnell Brody. The ball knocked out of bounds by Anderson. And that brings us to an official's timeout at 11.58. Left in regulation, the Bulldogs. It's Indiana State 1-0. Uh, Belmont off to a good start as well. So you see a lot of the teams at the top of the league starting off pretty well. But a lot of balance in that first five spots. I had Indiana State preseason pick number two. I think what Coach Josh Schertz has done with the continuity he has on his roster they're poised to take a big step forward this year. I would agree with you. Would not be the least bit surprised. Bulldogs with five of the shot clock have DeVries fire and score. Boy, that's tough. Lenny Acuff, you go to the 2 3 zone on the under basket out of bounds after a timeout to try to mess up and disorient this Drake offense. And Tucker DeVries at the end of the shot clock, almost near half court, a deep three for number 12. That's 25 points for DeVries. Bulldogs enjoying their biggest lead of the night. As Boyd looks in against the defense of Kevin Overton. Boyd gets Overton to go to the basket with him, scores, and Overton reaches in and fouls. A three-point opportunity coming up for Darian Boyd. And not that the third foul on Kevin Overton as well. I thought Kevin Overton's been done a good job in the second half playing defense on Boyd, but as we see Tucker DeBreeze knocking down the deep three, as the shot clock ticks down, but boy, just too strong going to that left hand, taking the contact from the freshman. DeVries, by the way, 8 of 14 from the floor, including two of six threes, seven of eight from the free throw line to add up to that 23 point total. He also has four assists. The left hander Boyd completes the three point play and pulls his team back within a pair at 60 58. And right, the Bulldog point guard brings it up. Brody sets the high screen. And right goes around into the baseline. Can't finish it, though. Scrap the rebound, and it's out of bounds off Lipscomb. And a great verticality that time by Pruitt going up and challenging Enright near the rim, forcing that miss. And good hustle on the offensive glass by Brody, earning that extra possession. Tucker DeBreeze looks to inbound. Nothing going inside, so we'll come outside. Darnell Brody runs it down. Brody with an eight point first half, has yet to score in the second half. DeVries looks inside, now Enright with the penetration. Out of the corner of the shot by Wright, he's hit a couple from there tonight, not this time, and Pruitt's got the rebound. Lipscomb can tie it with the two, take the lead with the three. Again, it's a squad that if they don't score in the first 10 seconds, they want to make you play some defense and score in the last 10, and that's where they are right now. 
Boyd off the screen of McCormick off the front of the iron. DeVries pulls down the rebound. And trying to draw the foul that time. Boyd off the screen. I think a pretty good no call by the official. DeVries in deep, spins, fires, and scores his 27th point of the night. Making his 28th point of the night. Wow, 28 from Tucker DeVries. Career best, 32 at Valparaiso. And he is certainly headed that direction now. Inside 10 seconds of the shot clock once again. Pruitt tough. finds his way inside tough. to score. He's a tough player anyway, isn't yeah, he? Yeah, just so crafty, Pruitt around the rim. You can't speed him up. He's just going to get to his spots and big time bucket for number two. Third year starter in the Lipscomb program, and they just love him. And again, playing with a broken nose and a bad calf and supposed to be on a time limit as far as minutes doesn't seem to be in effect tonight. Is DeVries once again to the rack. He's got 30. How about the strength, Tucker DeVries? That's a move that we saw maybe last year. He would have been more off balance. So the work in the offseason, Tucker DeVries working on his body, working on his strength, working on his balance, taking the contact from McCormick. Here's a guy who's stepped it up every single year. Yeah. Not easy to do when you play at the level that he plays at, but he's done just that. DeVries that time chasing and committing the foul. Yeah, showing the ability to handle T.J. Johnson that time. Nothing going on the offensive side, but even at six foot six, showing his ability to put the ball on the floor and create offense. Hey, what's uncharacteristic about the Bulldogs tonight? Known for a deep bench, just two points off the bench, and of course, a lot of those guys are newcomers just yeah. trying to feel their way. Brody on the kick, and so the shot clock reset to 20, and a cup. Or I should say Cup's team Lipscomb will inbound the ball with 8.50 left to play. Nate Ferguson back in. Darnell Brody will get a rest. And get the talking to from Darren DeVries. Is Pruitt trying to break down Enright with McCormick setting the screen. Pruitt lost the ball but got it back. He's something else, isn't he? Yeah, just so heady. And so confident with the basketball, really understands spacing in the system, using his body. McCormick with the rebound, but the shot clock expired. Shot by Truett did not draw a rim. And so the delay there goes to uh, McCormick, or I should say, uh, yeah, McCormick trying to save it, could not. The breeze, by the way. 17 of those points here in the second half wow. and 30 for the ball game and you saw Nate Ferguson sub in that possession just does a good job helping contain ball handlers off dribble penetration forces as Lipscomb goes through one two ball screens just forces the possession a little bit longer at the top it is DeVries being guarded by Asmund Tries to get around him, shovels it off for Enright, who buries the three. Connor Enright with 10 points, his second three of the night. Anderson the other direction. Bulldogs up by seven. That equals their biggest lead. Foul called against Overton, and that'll be number four. Number four on him, and another foul, foul drawn by Boyd, using that body to create contact off the bounce. He had the ability to shoot the basketball. Six foot seven, high release, smooth when he lets it go, but he's continued to grow in his ability to go off the bounce, Boyd. learning how to play in the mid post, getting all the way to the rim. Three level scores, yeah. he showed it there in yeah. that highlight package, all three levels. Yeah, absolutely, and that was just in about a two minute stretch. Show why Tucker DeVries, preseason player of the year in this league. Kyron Gibson, the transfer from Texas Arlington, pulls down the rebound, and the Bulldogs try to build on this seven-point lead, which right now is their biggest of the night. It's DeVries in the corner. He finds that and Wright. Wright pulls up, fires a three ball, and scores it. Nice debut for Wright, as he has 13 points. He's the guy that coach Darren DeVries wants to be the number two scorer and you see this Lipscomb offense moving a little bit slower as Asman making a nice move around Ferguson 
getting all the way to the rim. Connor Enright look, thought about taking a charge. That's a business decision to get out of the way as Asman's <laughs> getting to the approach in the paint. Good call. 6'8", 220 coming at you. Business decision. I like the term. Or maybe a some respect for life and limb decision. Yeah, right. Well, at a certain point, Larry, what's the difference? You know what I mean? Aiton Wright pulls up and almost had back-to-back -back threes and is in and out. And the rebound taken by Will Pruitt. That time the Drake offense bogging down a little bit. Both these teams getting a little bit tired. Not quite as crisp on the offensive side. Anderson mishandles the pass. Ferguson tips it away. Connor Enright picks it up. Enright can take it all the way to the basket and miss it. But he will go to the line with a foul called on McGinnis. Man, Connor Enright, just a whirling dervish as he gets in the open floor. First one to the basketball on the defensive side. Good job by Nate Ferguson tipping that one away. And Connor Enright going with the same hand, same leg. Fell a little bit awkwardly. Looks like he's stretching out his toes here, making sure he's loose. But good sportsmanship by McGinnis as well, making sure to check on Connor Enright, see if he's okay as he hit the floor. Wearing the wrap on the left knee after having a knee injury in preseason practice and missed five weeks, but he's come back and that free throw missed by the Bulldogs, but they haven't missed many tonight, just their second miss in nine tries. One more for Connor Enright, the sophomore from Mundelein, Illinois, who made the all-freshman team a season ago in the Valley. And Wright, whose parents drove in from Mundelein to watch him play tonight, hits the free throw as the Bulldogs will send Colby Garland back into the lineup. Garland, another of the newcomers, a freshman from Magnolia, Arkansas. Off the ball, there's contact, and the Bulldogs will guilty of a foul, and I believe that time they caught Garland, and Colby Garland with his first foul. And now a one and one opportunity, sending McGinnis to the line as he's cutting through the lane. Those are the type of fouls, Larry, that you see more from freshmen, right? Just trying to be a little too aggressive, coming in, Colby Garland, just a little too handsy with McGinnis as he was cutting through the lane. Just the second free throw of the second half for Lipscomb. And it's a 23-point night for A.J. McGinnis who began his career at UNC Greensboro for Coach Wes Miller. Miller got the job at Cincinnati. He followed him to Cincinnati and then didn't really fit in the Cincinnati program, transferred to Lipscomb. And he's had a good growth trajectory at Lipscomb. We mentioned it in the open, averaged seven points a game a year ago, six starts in double figures 10 times, but how about 24 points, a career high for McGinnis, making it look easy. DeVries finds Wright. Brody, nice move inside the score. Yeah, how about that? Nice move. Slippery from the big fella, taking the body contact, getting through McCormick right at the rim. Bulldogs stretch the lead to nine with just under six minutes left to play. Anderson with the kick for Boyd. Boyd gets around Overton, or Gibson, I should say. Gibson grabs him all the way through. And he gets his first foul of the night. We look at Kyron Gibson, who is uh, again from Alexandria, Louisiana, was the leading scorer at Texas Arlington last year, averaging 14 points a ball game. Junior college All-American and League College prior to his stint at Texas Arlington. And Darian Boyd goes to the line. You know, I'm still stuck, Larry, when you said Darian and then Darren, and you did the spellings. I didn't even realize the two. I saw Darian Boyd in the pronunciation guide, but I, I just didn't expect to see that between Darren DeVries and Darian Boyd, despite the spellings. Well, in case anybody missed that gem from the first half, <laughs> the man at the free throw line spells his name D-E-R-R-I-N. You'd think that's Darren, right? Yeah, nope, would. nope, but he pronounces it Darian. The Bulldogs head coach spells his name D-A-R-I-A-N, but he pronounces it Darren. I asked him about that once. He said, yeah, family just wanted a fancy name to, to spell his name. Here's Aiton Wright driving, losing the ball, getting it back, and knocking it down. And Wright has made himself an impressive debut for the Bulldogs. Man, how about the strength of number 10 going right at Dar Darian Boyd? And Boyd going the other end. 
going hard, and I think that's the third charge drawn. Connor Enright in this game taking the contact from Boyd. The third charge drawn from Connor Enright. Bulldogs have hit six of their last eight shots, stretching the lead to nine, but if you joined us late, it has not been that easy for Drake tonight. But in addition to the offense clicking, they have definitely shored up their defense. DeVries spins and was looking for equal career high, didn't get it. Darnell Brody goes up and he gets fouled and will go to the line. Would you agree with that statement or not, that the Bulldogs have shored up their second half defense? Yeah, it's definitely been better. I, I think there's been the early insertion of Nate Ferguson in the lineup and the guards being a little bit more aggressive on the screens. And we've just seen maybe a little bit more connectedness defensively for this Drake group. And when you got Darnell Brody on the inside making hustle plays like he did there, getting those second chance opportunities, the big fella not to be denied grabbing, corralling that basketball, going to the free throw line. Brody, who averaged nine points and seven rebounds last year, looking for his 12th point. And by the way, it's hit both of his free throws after shooting less than 60% from the line last season, something he has worked on in the offseason, break with their biggest lead. Yeah, and already at 11 points. Whoa, Enright slips and still makes it. After, after he slipped, I thought, no way, I was wrong. <laughs> Boyd on the drive, kicks it off. Anderson to the lane, doesn't shoot very often, shoots this time. And once again, it was the size of Brody that deflected the shot. DeVries weaves his way into the lane, right for three, leaves it a little bit short. And the ball is picked up by McCormick. Exactly four to play. Deep three, try by Boyd. Rebound by Wright. And you see the frantic plays going back and forth. Lipscomb going a little cold on the offensive end. And this great defense, you mentioned it a minute ago, picked up. And Connor Enright, how about that finish a minute ago, Larry? I'm still trying to figure out how he got that thing to go. I'd love to see a replay of that. Hopefully we'll get to it. I don't know how he did it. And a foul whistled that time against McGinnis. That will be his third. And that will bring us to a timeout with 3.37 left to play. The Bulldogs... Humans work on both ends. Three minutes, 37 seconds left to play. The Bulldogs trying to open the season on their home court with success. DeVries to the line. If he hits them both, he will equal a career best. That gives him 31. Got 32 against Valpo last season. He's on the watch list for the Naismith Trophy, which is about the highest honor as an individual can get yep. in men's college basketball. Also, the Julius Irving small forward watch list. And he'll have to wait another possession if he's to set a career best tonight. McCormick for three. Those threes that were falling in the first half for Lipscomb are not falling in the second half, and they have missed their last six shots. And we'll see a little bit of a slower offensive possession here from Drake. Well, to one, run clock with this 14-point advantage. They wind the shot clock down to 10 before the offense moves into motion. DeBreeze moves around the Darnell Brody screen, pulls up and gets a career high, 33rd point. And yeah, that's just great patience from Tucker DeBreeze, running the offense, comfortable with the ball in his hands. Good two-man game with Brody. McGinnis also on a career night, scores again, and that gives him 26. And, that's and a timeout taken by Lipscomb. Overton gets caught on the screen. Darnell Brody doesn't step up all the way. We saw a lot of those in the first half. Bounce for Lipscomb. 38 to 20 here in the second half. Yeah, it's been an offensive explosion, but the difference, we talked about it a lot at halftime, picking up the defensive side of the basketball, not allowing those easy one-two dribble pull-ups, not as many open threes, concerted effort to lock down on the defensive side as Lipscomb in a little one-two-two, two, three-quarter court trying to control pace, see if they can get turnovers. Lipscomb has the ball taken away and coming up with it is Pruitt. McGinnis fakes past the defender and misfires on the shot and DeBreeze is there for the rebound. 
Lipscomb in the first half hit 60% of their three-point tries. They've hit only 13% here in the second half. Enright put the brakes on. Uh, we mentioned earlier, especially on the defensive side for Drake, having so many new guys, no Roman Penn, no DJ Wilkins, no Garrett Sturtz that have been on the floor the last five years for the Bulldogs. A little bit different, closing out games as well. And yet expectations remain the same. And that is Missouri Valley Conference champions, according to the preseason poll. Boyd gets the foul, and DeVries on a career night goes to the line. So his line right now shows 11 of 19 from the floor, including three threes and eight tries, 33 points. And maybe the only thing he would like to do a little better is free throws. He's missed three of those. He's 8 of 11. But Dad's got to be very pleased with the way his son has performed tonight. Well, and Larry, honestly, the 34 points is kind of like, yeah, you expect that. Like, you, you expect him to be able to knock down 11 and 19 shots. As crazy as that seems and all the attention that he gets, but it's been the playmaking, the timeliness of his buckets that's been really impressive. Tucker DeVries, now the upperclassman, the experienced guy on the floor helping lead his team. And to underline playmaking, he has six assists yeah. in addition to those 34 points. Yeah, I think his career high for assists is maybe seven, so he's up towards his career high. It's his playmaking that is going to be so core to this offense, and I think we saw for Coach Darren DeVries, we saw some growth out of this group from the first half to the second half, shoring up the defense, and no doubt he and the coaching staff will continue to work through and clean up their rotations, but when you got number 12 with the basketball at the top of the circle, this team can be tough to stop. And that's, boy, let me underline what you just said, at the top of the circle. We're yep. not seeing, we're seeing him in a new space this year. Final minute of this one, and the Bulldogs will stretch their home non-conference win streak to 38. And they will stretch their streak of scoring better than 80 points under DeVries to 55 and 1. Tucker, has he got two more in him? Now it's time to get us locked, so Tucker fires again, and this time a rare miss for him, and with 27 seconds left to play, Lipscomb will play the basketball. DeVries is going to get a curtain call, as is Enright, as is Darnell Brody, but Darren DeVries, the big man tonight, Huge in his 36-point performance. And again, a career high in points and just under a career high in assists. Foul whistled that time against Wright. And Aiton Wright has also had a big game for the Bulldogs tonight in his great debut. He's the second leading scorer with 15 points, also in double figures. And Wright with 13 and Darnell Brody with a dozen. And Larry, you kind of mentioned it. We talked about it at halftime as McCormick knocks down that free throw, but what a tale of two halves. 48-44 at halftime. Lipscomb doing a great job offensively, got whatever they want. This great team making some adjustments in the second half. That a big free throw for certain people watching the game as this one closes out. 15 point for Bulldog lead with the clock winding down and the Bulldogs pulling it out and not taking a final shot and they will win their opener against Lipscomb by a score of 85 to 70. And again, huge night for Tucker DeVries, but the newcomers show up well too and Aiton Wright getting his 15 points and then the veterans Brody and 